Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Eddie, and today I have a very exciting video for you guys. It is the Ryzen 7 2700X going up against the Intel i7-8700K, so another battle of the big boys. So let's jump right into it and talk about the specs of these two CPUs. So the Intel i7-8700K is a 6-core, 12-thread, 14 nanometer Coffee Lake CPU with a 3.7 GHz base clock and a 4.7 GHz turbo clock and it is fully unlocked. The Ryzen 7 2700X is an 8-core, 16-thread, 12 nanometer Ryzen CPU coming with a 3.7 GHz base clock, so the same base clock, but a 4.3 GHz turbo clock and it is also fully unlocked. Now it is coming with some good improvements, including improved cache latency speeds, a 3% IPC improvement, and higher clock speeds. So with that being said, let's take a look at the test rigs then. So for the Ryzen 7, I'm testing it with X470, and I got a great X470 to test with it. The Gigabyte Aorus Gaming 7, which has been absolutely fantastic to use. X470 brings some better power delivery, which is nice, and Store MI, which some people might like and I may talk about in another video. The 8700K was tested with the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon, which is also a very good motherboard. Now, both of them were tested with 16GB of G-Skill DDR4 memory at 3400MHz for all the tests. Both were tested with the MSI Gaming X GTX 1080 Ti. And both were tested with the Arctic Freezer 33 120mm air cooler. This was done for two reasons. One was that we could see sort of what the temps were between the two CPUs with the same cooler. And two, it also gives you an idea of the overclocking capabilities with both the CPUs if they had the same cooler. Speaking of which, let's now talk about the overclocking. So the 2700X there has a boost speed of 4.3 GHz, so it's more like 4.35 from what I saw. Uh, that's, you know, very good, especially over previous generation Ryzen. Uh, however, the issue being is that once you go to overclock it, I couldn't get it higher than 4.2 GHz on all cores. This means that in some of my testing, as I'll talk about when we get to the benchmarks, uh, in things that would load up all cores, you would get a slightly better score. Uh, but in some things like games where it's not loading up as many cores, sometimes the score would be the same. Sometimes it would actually go down slightly because the stock boost speed being 4.35 megahertz, gigahertz I should say, uh, was quite good. You know, that's really solid there. The 8700K on the other hand does overclock quite nicely, but it gets so damn hot, especially with a 120 millimeter air cooler. So I could get it up to 4.9 gigahertz on all six cores, which is a decent overclock, but that was it. And even then it was getting pretty damn hot. So to test the temps, I ran the IDA64 CPU stress test for five minutes and took the highest temperatures that they went up to. And as you guys can see, yeah, the 8700K gets pretty damn hot. There's no two ways about it. And the 2700X does a pretty good job, all things considered. So, yeah, what do I have to say about that? Well, yeah, the better temps on the Ryzen 7, just like previous generation. And I will be testing them with their stock coolers because the 2700X does come with a pretty decent stock cooler, the Wraith Prism. And I will be doing a separate video where I cover all the different stock coolers with them. But let's get to the benchmarks, because that's the most important thing. So, for the benchmarks, I only showed the overclocked 2700X results when they did better than the stock results. And that was pretty much only the case in the uh, sort of synthetic workloads or the multi-core test. When it came to games, I didn't see any improvement really. Now, I'm not sure why that is because others, YouTubers, have seen small improvements, although some of the times it's within the margin of error, but some of them have seen uh, little improvements here and there. But for me, I really didn't see many at all uh, with the Ryzen 7 2700X overclocked at its stock speeds. It would do pretty much the same thing, uh, if not sometimes even slightly better. However, without further ado, let's jump into the benchmarks and see how these two CPUs perform.
make of the benchmark, Sam? Well, in multi-threaded applications and productivity stuff, the 2700X really runs away with it. And that's to be expected. I mean, this is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU going up against a 6-core. So, yeah, it has the advantage, the core advantage there, which means it's going to do better in those productivity tests. However, the 8700K is no slouch, and especially when it was at 4.9 gigahertz, it was catching up a bit. But when it comes to gaming, the 8700K still win. The, it's still the king. There's just no two ways about it, guys. The 8700K, for all its vices, is still the best gaming CPU. And as you could see in the benchmarks, it ran away with it in the games, opening up a decent margin, especially once it was overclocked. So the 8700K is the winner in terms of gaming, but the 2700X is the winner if you're going to be doing productivity workstation type things with it. For streamers, it's going to be harder to say, and uh, that will be an interesting thing. Maybe I'll test that going forward to see the difference between them. The reasoning for this, basically, is because the 8700K has those long legs. Games generally prefer, this is generally speaking, generally prefer clock speed over cores. Uh, productivity things like rendering that definitely prefers cores over clock speed. Not, you know, that's a generalization. Obviously, if you get really high clock speeds, then it can close the gap a lot. Uh, but, yeah, generally speaking, that's what they like to see. And that's why you see things like the 2700X doing better in the productivity stuff, but then falling a little bit short of the 8700K, especially once it was overclocked in gaming. Which brings us now to the conclusion. And we must bring price into the equation because it's very important for these two CPUs. So right now, here in New Zealand at Playtech, if you want to pick up the Intel i7 8700K, it's going to set you back 559 New Zealand dollars, and that is without a cooler. Now, if you want to pick up the Ryzen 7 2700X, that's going to come in at 509 New Zealand dollars, and it's coming with like an awesome RGB cooler as well, the Wraith Prism. So at a minimum, you're going to need like a 120 millimeter air cooler for the 8700K, but an all-in-one liquid cooler would be better for it because you're really going to be able to get the most out of your 8700K uh, within like 240 or 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, whereas with the 120 millimeter air cooler, uh, you're still going to be able to get some decent overclock out of it like I did, but you're definitely still going to be limiting yourself. So that is something to consider. The 2700X doesn't need anything. The stock cooler is more than good enough. So I basically have to round out the showdown this way. If money isn't an issue for you, or it's not the main thing you're worried about when buying a new CPU, and you're just looking for the best gaming CPU you can get, buy the 8700K. That's all there is to it. It's still the king. It's still the best gaming CPU that you can get. However... If money is an issue for you or something that you really consider when buying a new CPU, then I have to give it to the 2700X. It's just the better value all round, especially with the good cooler it's coming with. And that's how I would put it. And it, also, if you're doing anything with productivity or maybe a streaming or something like that, then I think the 2700X would also be the better option. So that's basically how I have to put this show down. If I was to pick out of the two, it would be difficult for me because you kind of have to weigh up which one's a bigger priority for you and how much you value the extra cores with the 2700X over the extra clock speed you get with the 8700K. However, I want to kick it to you guys. Which one would you pick out of the two? Uh, because it's obviously different people have different needs, different people are in different financial situations. So which one would you pick? Would you go with the 8700K with that beastly gaming performance? Or would you rather go for the better value 2700X? I'd really like to know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Now, as always, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to Tech Showdown because I have an 8600K versus 2600X showdown right around the corner. And you're really going to want to check that out because it's a really good showdown, guys. I right, thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.